Yo, what's going on, YouTube? Mocha Beats back here with another video, and today I'm gonna show you guys how to make a wheezy and kind of like a 4PF type of beat. So, uh, yeah, let's get straight into it. For this wheezy 4PF type of beat, basically, I worked in the key of F sharp minor and at the BPM of 140 BPM because a lot of people I feel when they make 4PF type beats with the pianos, they work in D minor, D sharp minor, but since I'm not using the piano, I decided to work in whatever key I felt comfortable working in. You can also do the same. But for the BPM, you know, a lot of people with these 4PF beats uh, work in like 140 to 160, 150 range. So that's 140 is the BPM I chose. So basically, for the horns, the bank and contact I used was session horns. I didn't change anything about it. And basically, I just placed down a chord, a minor chord. And it just shortened it and stabbed it like this. I just shortened it so it'll sound like a staccato. Like a shot, a little shot. Instead of if it was just like this, it wouldn't it would uh hold. And I didn't want it like that. I wanted it to sound short. On the second part. On this bar right here, instead of having it shortened like this one, I brought it, I brought the length out just a little bit, so it'll sound a little different. And then I added this little top melody and this melody right here. It gives it a lot of spice, and you know it makes it sounds, it makes it sound a lot more unique. Then I just copy this right here and then I just held the whole chord out the whole first chord right here this one and then this one which I think the chords are F sharp and E, e minor I just held those chords out and put this over the C sharp the B5 and the A5 and that's basically just a little top melody nothing too crazy um just something to give us some spice to uh Leading to the next uh, four bars of the melody. Then I just copied and pasted that, and instead of it going down, I brought the A the A five to an F sharp. Yeah, the, I brought the A five to an F sharp, and made this little stab right here so it could sound like somebody was playing the uh, horn. But yeah, that's basically it for the first melody. So. After you got that, basically, after you got your horns, we're going to move on to the next part of the melody, which is, oh, this is just another part of the horns. I just took out the little part right here. And it just has the ending parts, but yeah, I skipped it there real quick. And right here, I, I uh, used this preset X pen, went to the strings. Spiccato, up and down. You know, X is a really good VST if you're uh just now starting to make beats. It's at a really low price. I suggest you go buy it. Um, cause it, I mean, for the price it's at, it's got a lot of a lot of sounds. A lot. It's only like twenty five dollars. I don't know. It's real cheap. But I suggest for y'all to go cop X Pan. You know, it's, it's worth the money. That's all I gotta say. But yeah, basically for this, I, um, instead of having the chords like this, I just, you know, dragged them back a little bit, changed them up. I really just, uh, needed something to, like, flow with the trumpet so it wouldn't sound so bland by itself. So with this, you kind of just want to, like, go with the flow and, uh, freestyle a little bit. but. Yeah, instead of a chord playing right here, I took, like I said, this is the same chord at the starting of the, of the horns. Just change it up a little bit. This isn't a chord. You just want to stay in the same notes as you did with the with the horns, because these are all the same notes. And after that, by the looks of it, it just repeats itself. Instead of it playing B5 and C sharp, it goes back right here and plays... E and F sharp does it again and then just 
does this? I don't really know. On that part of the horns, where it played like like this, I had it copy that basically. But instead of it playing the whole thing and then going down and going to A, I had I had it just cut a little bit, so it wouldn't sound so it wouldn't sound the same. Yeah, basically. Then I just copied it over. So, for this part, this is a little ambient part. For this, I use the Letcher X. Uh, I probably recommend if you don't have a Letcher X, use Theorem could probably work for this, and then maybe X Man. But I'm not sure because I don't really be using X Man too much, but it is a really good plugin. But Theorem could probably most definitely work for this, or you could even use One Shots. But I got this Roy Major Letcher X Bank, and the preset is the Bell O2 and the Letcher X. If you guys can't see that. And for this one, I really just went for the f with. I really just went with the flow, stayed in the same notes as the uh, horns, and some of these sound a little off because I didn't want it to sound repetitive. So I made it to where it wouldn't play at the same time as everything else. The bells, you don't have to necessarily add them, but it gives it a lot more sauce, so a different flavor, you feel me? So, yeah, I'd highly suggest adding bells to beats like this, but just don't have them too loud, kind of like a background noise. But yeah, like I said, not too much for the bells. And, uh, yeah. Now, there's one more part of the melody, but this last part isn't nothing crazy. It's literally just a pad. <laughs> C sharp every two bars and uh, the preset for that pad is DNA in the soft pad spank and X band so uh, yeah now we'll move on to the drums so for the hi-hats as everybody knows if you made a 4pf beat or watched a 4pf tutorial you want to uh, change your grid to one third step or one third beat and just really go crazy you know it's basically like a two-step when it comes to this but I'll show you guys so when you make these type of 4pf beats in general just when you're making 4pf like I said you want to go go on one third beat you know place a little hi-hat right here and then just do it for the whole nine bars so it'll be like a two-step See, it sounds a lot more faster. It's a two-step, but it's not. And then from there, I'd say you can go on whatever grid you want. But I usually just go from one-third beat to one-third step. And just go crazy with the rolls. Whoops. For the rolls, you can just do whatever. Just don't do... I wouldn't suggest you do too many. Just make them quick. Yeah, don't go too crazy with the hats. But after the hat, you know, I got a clap. Nothing special, just a regular clap. And then a snare to layer over the clap in the place on pattern. I always put snares over my uh, claps. 
or up under my claps so it'll give it more of like a punch and it'll make it sound a lot more louder. For the snares, honestly, don't do too much, but I, personally, I like to add rolls to my snares. And the way I did this roll right here, or it sounded like it was being reversed, I basically just came in here, control, left click, drag to highlight it, and right click. Just go to the velocity, right click, and drag up or drag down to play with the velocity like that, which made it fade in, which made it sound like it was getting reversed. My fault. But yeah, just a couple of rolls and nothing too crazy. For the open hat, I had it play on every one. And on the three, I played it and then I had it play right here again. I usually add two open hi hats on my beat. But yeah, after I did that, I just copied and pasted it. And instead of it just playing one time right here, I had it play again. It was just a lot more quieter. But yeah, then I got my other hi hat. Just after you put it where you like, which I put it right there somewhere on the one, the third hit, I think. Copy and paste it, really. I copied, ah, uh, highlight about three bars or whatever. Mm -hmm. Just go with the flow. And then I added a perk. This perk, I wouldn't really say it's necessary, but I didn't add it too many times. And then, you know, you got to add the chant. It's just, you know, you got to, like... <coughs> You hear that chant in a lot of uh little baby's songs, a lot of Chi Chi and Section Eight's beats, and so I had to, you know. It's just I can't think of the word. It's just mandatory it feels like to add that chant. So yeah. For the eight oh eights, I didn't go too crazy. You know, I did a little bit of some rolls at the end. Because you know how Chi Chi be when he be doing his 808s, he be going crazy with the rolls sometimes. But um, I kind of don't like to, with these 4PF beats, I don't like them to like hit like this. I'm going to show you guys. I don't like them to really be all close. I mean, some 4PF beats maybe, but in, in this one, I didn't really want it to be all close. So I kind of kept the 808s a little separate. Some parts they were close, but not the whole time. You know, for the roll, I didn't go too crazy because I don't really be doing crazy rolls, but for the rolls, don't go too crazy unless you know what you're doing. For real, cause me when I made this, I didn't, I didn't really know what I was doing with the roll, so I didn't want to do too, nothing too crazy, nothing too complex. And then after that, I just added a kick. So uh, yeah, that basically, that's basically the whole beat. If you made it to the end of the video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know down in the comments what type of beat you guys want to see me show a tutorial on next. But yeah, that's basically the whole beat. Um, I want to give a shout out to Max Shooter because I kind of got the inspiration of making this beat from the video he did. But yeah, I'm basically going to show you guys the whole beat.